Britain, it's time to brace because The Crown is back for the second part of its sixth and final season, covering the most memorable and controversial royal moments of the late 90s and the early noughties. Imelda Staunton returns as a now elderly Queen Elizabeth and appears to be haunted by her younger selves, played by, played by Claire Foy and Olivia Colman. In one scene, Staunton's Elizabeth, tired by years of controversies, even considers abdicating, something that's left royalists reeling. But what about the life I put aside? The woman I put aside when I became queen? Don't worry, guys, it's not a documentary. Now, the show also recreates the moment when Kate first wows Will, wearing that famous sheer, sheer dress at a St Andrews fashion show. But the Middletons might feel a bit miffed. Kate's mother, Carol, is portrayed as a meddling Mrs Bennet figure, organising her daughter's switch from Edinburgh University to where the future king is studying. And can we expect Harry to get the hump? In the final episode, the young prince dons his infamous Nazi costume for a fancy dress party, whilst Kate tells him to cover the swastika. A narrative that directly contradicts Harry's memoir Spare, in which he insists his brother and sister-in-law howled with laughter when they saw the outfit. The season hasn't shied away from the shimmering ten simmering tensions excuse me, between the royal brothers, who are seen bickering over the death of their mother and their father's new relationship with Camilla. Like I said, guys, not a documentary. Everybody can't tell down. that to the Americans. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think this part, the second part of season six, is definitely better than the first part. Yeah. The first part, which focused on those four episodes around the death of Princess Diana, the eight weeks leading up to it, and the aftermath for it, was pretty grim. Felt quite voyeuristic. Yeah. Although Elizabeth Debicki gave an incredible performance, which she's nominated for a Golden Globes for, and rightly so. But this second part of the season, first of all, Imelda Staunton as the Queen is much more sort of real and emotional. I think she was quite cold in the first four parts. These last six parts, it's much better. It's a very poignant ending, very, very powerful, not about to give any spoilers. But like I said, everybody has to remember, like, especially with, you know, you've got a bit in here where they've kind of created that Kate Middleton perhaps met Princess Diana before she died, which of course we know didn't happen. And you know, they 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 have added all these things, used all these fictional mechanisms to build together this picture. It's fiction, guys. No need to get You've really the studied this, Lark. I have. Oh. Wow. Watched it all. That's PhD level. Thank I've never you. seen. I've still not seen an episode. Not, really? No, not at all. But well, I'm we look forward to your comments. Then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was about to say all I'm holding on to here because I see so many clips. I feel that I've. You know that Breaking Bad moment when somebody you meet somebody who hasn't yet seen something as brilliant as Breaking Bad, and you slightly envy the fact that you, that's they're, me. They're going to have that moment. But with this, bearing in mind I seem to have seen about 38 hours worth of clips so far, yeah. it's almost like I've, I've had too many spoiler alerts. It's, it's too much. I, I completely agree. I've, I've seen almost all this, the second chunk that's that's just dropped. Um, and it is streets ahead of the first one. It's like two completely different production companies or, or directors have, have done them. The first four were quite boring. They were obsessed with just Diana's death. There was nothing. Quite it's dark. Very dark. Mm. The wonderful thing about the crown in the past is that they've, you know, they've sort of um, interspersed all these different stories, and you get some politics, and you get some history, and all that. Whereas the Diana stories, were, you know, it, was it was just, just that. It was just that, and nothing else. So in these latest <coughs> ones, you've got a lot of Tony Blair and Cherie Blair. You've got, um, you know, some looking back to the Second World War. You know, there's, it's properly. Uh, sort of nuanced and layered, and it's just a much better show. And as ever with The Crown, the performances are very, very good. Mm. William is is excellent. Mm. The boy they've got playing Harry though looks nothing yeah. like it. He looks like it's one of weird. the popes. I mean, he doesn't look anything <laughs> like. And him. he also looks. He also looks about thirty-seven. Now. Yeah, he <laughs> looks. He looks <laughs> look at him. Look at him. That's him. Yeah. That's meant to be oh Harry. Is that Harry? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, you know, you know. It, looks like, it looks like Lee Evans, doesn't it? Honestly, some, a member of the royal family cast that. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'll tell you though, the, the thing about the crown is uh, the bedrock of it is the royals never sue. 
Because if you did this to any other family, yeah. uh, the lawsuits would be coming we in. We wouldn't like get past episode one. Like yeah. Confetti. Yeah. Uh, and on that tack, I'm very surprised that uh, Harry hasn't taken the opportunity <laughs> to launch legal action to add to his collection of writs. Uh, but uh, a lot of royal experts, I had Tom Bauer on our show today. Uh, royal author and all that, uh, and, and he said the thing about Carol Middleton is this: to, uh, this is his contention. Others have said the same. It's absolutely true. She was due. Uh, Kate was due to go to Edinburgh University. Uh, uh, Carol Middleton apparently found out. Oh, uh, William's going to St Andrews. Why don't you have a gap year? Uh, don't go to Edinburgh. We'll get you into St Andrews. And she went to St, St Andrews and. You know, so they're, she, they're, they're, she plotted according to, according to, to Tom Bauer her. and others, there was definitely a Mrs. And, Bennett and element of this. Tina Brown yes. said that in yeah. her yeah. book. Yeah. Can, yeah. can you blame her? I feel like the show, a show like The Crown can only appeal to Americans because I think there's such a what? distance. Well, The Crown, it can only appeal to Americans. Really? Well, it, it's done pretty well over well, here. Well, the, yeah. the thing is... But, it, it appeals very much so to it, British it, people But the thing is, well, it appeals as it's almost satirical. I, 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 When I watch The Crown, I just think... This is so Americanized. It's even even like the long pauses and the drama. Yeah, but it doesn't just appeal scene. to Americans. No, but you get that. I, I get it, but I feel like it, it, it mostly appeals to Americans. I mean, no, it does. No, it's not. Like, it's true. It's true. Not no, I'm true. serious because the thing is because the thing is it, 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 we experienced it so realistically here. We're just like, oh my god, this clearly didn't happen this way. I mean, Harry, okay. Harry in the Crown is—he <sighs> looks like a, a bit of a rodent. The, the thing is, <laughs> with, with the Crown. <laughs> so from season one right through to. Season six, right? Mm. And most of it, like Daisy said, is very historical. So you learn about what was going on in the time, whether it was like the minor strike, Margaret Thatcher, and all that, mm. which you weren't alive for. Let's be honest. Mm. So I think it's done. Neither were you. Neither were you. That's neither. when they discovered fire. Exactly. But this is the thing: is that it doesn't. It's not made solely for an American audience. It doesn't just appeal not. to Americans, and actually, not just for people who are monarchists either. But it was History, made, it must have been made with American. that in mind. Look, yeah, you don't make a big show, sell it to Netflix without thinking our prime audience, our biggest of audience, course. our most uh, gullible audience is going to be doing well, uh, uh, So our, they, our they license, have. our dramatic licences are they way extended by, exactly. by writing it for the American no, that's side true. The only thing about the, the Carol Middleton storyline that, that Kevin was just talking about is, and I have read it, you know, I've, I've read it in Tina Brown's book and I know Tom Bowers say it and Omid Scobie says it in his, in his latest That's good book. enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not good enough for me. And I think one of the reasons that I, that I push back on that storyline is I find it she goes, it killing the so... story again, always no, killing good it's, stories. It's, it's, it's this, I find it so snobby. Mm. The idea that this woman yeah, yeah, could yeah. only have, you know, created a situation and forced her her common child onto yeah. William, if she, yeah. you know, because yeah. she was a, you know, she she was a trolley dolly and she was yeah. an air stewardess and she's, you know, she obviously therefore is has been pushing and pushing. I just find there's something really distasteful. So can I, can I, can I ask plausible a, actually? Can I ask a slightly naive question? Who is Mrs. Bennett? From She's Pride, in her, Pride and Prejudice. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. Oh, you know, the yeah. one who was always trying Good to God. set up her five daughters Well, yeah, but I probably read it 100 years ago and skimmed oh, that through was, it. Oh, that was... Jane, Jane, who? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jane. <laughs> Jane, oh, oh, what? Who?